we recording? Yes. You, you cannot go like this. No, of course. You have to go like this. Yes. One of the best. One of the best. Um, yeah. This is uh, Ebony and Zebrano. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are going with, uh, with the, in totally gloss this, this time. Uh, those are some uh, samples that we have to show to the clients. They prefer to have a, a physical, no, a real sample, not a picture, not uh, an image. This is a big help. When I started my job, uh, there wasn't the computer. Everything was made by hands. This comes from uh, Cinecittà in Rome, where we, they produce uh, movies. And uh, this was a part of, uh, I don't remember if 80 or 100 uh, Chinese soldiers for a movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over the past 30 years or so, Luca Dini has designed something like 3,000 linear meters of super yachts. That's about 85 different projects. There's no doubt that he's one of the leading yacht designers of his generation. Iconic is an overused word, but who can forget 50 meter tribu, which he designed for Luciano Beniton, and that was arguably the very first modern explorer yacht back in 2009. Over the years, Luca and I have bumped into each other many times at various boat shows and shipyards, but I've never really had the chance to sit down and talk with him at length. Well, today I'm going to put that right, because we've come to his studio in the center of historic Florence to find out what makes Luca Dini, the yacht designer, tick. I heard somewhere that you originally thought about becoming a lawyer. What changed your mind? <laughs> yeah, um, at that time when I was young, um, many kilos ago, uh, we, I decided to go, yeah, to the, that kind of a university. The intention was to become uh, a lawyer, not because uh, I was in love with, uh, with that field, but because it was full of young girls and parties. And I spent there two years with uh, zero examinations, uh, but a lot of parties and a lot of fun. Uh, immediately uh, after th those two years in that kind of university, I met two architects, friend of mine, uh, we started to share opinion and so on, and they proposed me to go and to work with them in this new field in a, in a branch of, uh, of uh, the, the studio that was uh, created specially for yachting. So immediately I decided to go there. Answers, yes, for sure. That is, we start with something like this, something handmade. After that, we have the computer and so on, but the first, uh, sketch. Normally we start with something like, like this, in a piece of paper and uh, with this and handmade. Early on in your career you worked with uh, Pier Luigi Spadolini, who's probably the, the, the John Bannenberg of the Italian yacht design world. How did that experience uh, affect your own sense of style? He was really uh, not only an architect. First of all, he was uh, a fantastic person, um, a genius, in my opinion. And I started in September 1987 with them. There was Tommaso, who was very young, me and other two architects. Um, it was uh, a fantastic experience, and me and uh, Professor Pierluigi uh, during the week, no, he came on, uh, on, uh, in the office just to do some comments. And 
and every time uh, he found not a mistake, but something that no, uh, you can, I don't know, adjust. You can do something different. You can do, uh, you can do something uh, was full of suggestion for us. And, uh, and every time was, uh, he was right. He was right. Uh, so um, I remember very well that uh, he hates something very complicated. No? You know, he created the, the Akir, the Cantiere di Pisa, with three lines. So that is uh, something that is always in our mind. Clean. Everything has to be clean, uh, elegant, and chic. Recently, you developed a, a concept project, which I believe is in build, a 24-meter gentleman's yacht for Cotacasa, which uh, is a reinterpretation of the Kitalfa, which was a reinterpretation of uh, Pierluigi Sparolini's original design. We designed different things, as you know. But I had in my mind that kind of particular yacht, not so big. Because it doesn't mean that uh, because it's big, it's fantastic, no? So probably this one is uh, a concentrate on nice things and, and beautiful things uh, with uh, some important detail, like uh, stainless steel, chrome, uh, uh, the wood on, uh, on the exterior, and so on. It's incredible that we are receiving a lot of requests for this boat. So this probably Mm, many owners need to have something like this. So, something different, uh, customized, really customized, because the intention is to do it, to do 10 yachts, only 10. Probably this is a piece, a little uh, no, um, piece of the market that has a lot of clients with, you know, that they have uh, this kind of mentality. Something small, they, they can drive alone without a lot of uh, crew around, maybe with a family, something simple to use, something for a small cruise or, uh, you know, a small period of vacation in, uh, in a certain kind of style. The, the other thing, the other boat, which uh, I remember made a big impact on me uh, when I first saw it was uh, 50 meter tribu, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably the first modern explorer yacht. When you designed Tribu for Luciano Benitor, yeah. did you already anticipate this trend towards a different kind of yacht, the explorer yacht? Probably yes, but I didn't know. Uh, this was honestly was uh, uh, Mr. Benetton's idea. We started to work together on uh, on, on uh, in with his uh, um, proposal to have something. The idea was to have something that from outside was uh, like a, a, a workshop, something uh, very, I don't know, um, rough, something um, masculine, but the inside very elegant. For example, this is just arrived, mm. it's a piece of rocks, if you see, this is Cristallo di Rocca, but this is something very special. Uh, so this was the first intention and the first drawings that we did was, uh, for example, on, on the side of the boat was written no smoking in red. And the other important point was that it had a commercial finish on the hull. No filler. No filler. No filler. And this was a very smart idea. So this was the intention uh, and in that time Unfortunately, there wasn't the technology, but the intention was to have a very silent yacht. Uh, because he hates, you know, especially in the port, when the engines or the generators you know, are working, create noise and so on. And we tried with, uh, with the Mondo Marine at that time, we tried to follow his suggestion. And, uh, and we create probably, I don't know, one, probably, yes, one of the first yachts, explorer yachts in the market. It's already mm, some years that we are doing the GA together with the engineer, having as information as much as possible. So 
It's what we call is a, a technical GA. And of course now you're designing explorers for Mondo Marine, but this time under the uh, Palumbo Superyachts brand. Yep. What do we see of Tribu in those current projects? Oh, first of all, that is immediate. The, the superstructure is uh, f compared the the hull is uh, totally forward, and we have all the decks free in the back. Uh, we are following the same problem, more or less as the, the layout with uh, all the services in the lower deck and the cabin where you have a big windows and so on. But it's at the end it's a masculine. Uh, we are not going uh, to do something, uh, I don't know, shabby chic. It's not the icebreaker at the moment. But the intention is to go and to stay out in the water, in the ocean for a long time. This is uh, what is uh, uh, similar what we have uh, we had in uh, in, uh, in Tribu. That is, uh, Tribu did uh, two or three times the world tour. So this is the our intention to proceed in this in this field. Is there a yacht out there designed by another designer? past or present, which you wish you had designed yourself? There are a few. Um, John Bannenberg, he designed, I don't know, um, one of, for me, is, uh, is, is the same. All the yachts that he designed are beautiful, honestly beautiful. But also, and I cannot forget, uh, Akir, the first Akir designed by Pierluigi Spadolini was one of my favorite. I know you also like motorbikes very much. Yeah. Why don't you design motorbikes? No, what I'm trying, I have uh, uh, an Harley Davidson. This is perfect for the fat boy. So, um, and I've tried to, to have some detail that I transport to, from the motorbike to the yachting. Uh, most of my colleagues, they are inspired by cars, me too, in a, for, in a certain way, but uh, I like to have some detail of uh, yeah, many of the Harley Davidson, and I like to have it also in, uh, in the, when I design yachts. Yeah. How have the aspirations of your clients changed over the years, what they want to do with their yachts? How is it different from when you started out? Um, when I started, uh, the idea of the owners was to, to have a villa, a real palace on the water. Uh, and they spent a lot of time inside. Uh, so was, uh, at that time was really important, the spaces inside uh, and so on. Um, I don't know, after 20 years, uh, everything changed completely and we started again to live the outdoor, the, the, to live outside of, uh, in contact with the nature, in contact with the, with the ocean. Our intention, and, and as I told you before, we are trying to have this concept in all our new projects, to have a lot of outdoor areas where you can live in different way, in different moment, uh, and in different mood. What is uh, in, the, in the last year, what is completely uh, changed is not, the request is not to have uh, what we saw a lot of time, balconies, openings, and uh, big doors, and so on. They want to have uh, interior platform uh, outside, uh, open uh, to, uh, for two reasons. One is to live outside, to live the, the environment. And the second is to reduce the famous uh, gross tonnage. So the combination of this uh, inspire us to do something very new. It's something that we, we uh, consider smart because thanks also to all these openings, the boat is 62 meter under 500 ton gross tons. So it's, you know, it's a new adventure 
uh, that we are testing with this boat, with this particular boat, um, just to have very good spaces um, based on uh, terraces created from uh, uh, cutting, practically cutting the superstructure and the hull. And what I like about this in the superstructure is that the front looks like the back and the back True. looks like the front. This is what we want to have. Of all your yacht projects, and I believe there are uh, more than 85 currently, do you have a favorite? Mm -hmm. But uh, Seaforce One for me is my love, honestly. Um, not only for, but for the boat itself, but also for the, m the moment that we spent together with the owner. has been an experience for both of us. Also with, uh, I don't know, artists from, uh, the, the, uh, from modern art, no? because the boat was uh, practically an art gallery, and, uh, and we had the possibility to, to speak and to share experience with all these artists. <laughs>What's the best piece of advice you would give a young person today looking to become a yacht designer? Maybe to play soccer, maybe it's better <laughs> and simple. No, um, honestly, in, in this period, uh, as I told you before, we have uh, me and my colleagues, because I spoke with them, and we are receiving a lot of requests. The new boats, probably this uh, COVID created in our brain uh, something uh, people seems that they want to spend and they want to spend time um, in the nature. So what I can suggest and I normally suggest is to start not only with the university or with some uh, schools that are all around the world, but also to have an experience or in a shipyard or in, uh, in a studio. Or better, both. To, have, to see the technical aspect and, uh, I don't know, the, the dreaming, the dream uh, part of this world. What's the, the strangest request you've had from an owner? I'm thinking what I can say, yeah? Something is... It's too dangerous to say. No, but you know, sometimes you have uh, funny customers. Um, one, uh, he had three girlfriends, and he normally slept with uh, in, in four in one bed. So <laughs> he asked us to have one bed for him and uh, and three girlfriends so big in a cabin that it was really small. So at the end, this cabin had only a small corridor around the bed. The rest was the entire bed. And do the owners become your friends or is it better to keep a, a client relationship, a business but relationship? Friend, friend is a big word. Eh? But you know, mm, you, you have to spend three years with them. So. If, especially if you have immediately a good relationship, that's helped a lot. Um, you know, they are not coming to us because they need the surgery or something very important. This is a toy. And I told them, this, we can do this work together, but it has to be fun. So that's what you need to know. If you, if you want to design a yacht with Luca, you have to have fun, right? Yeah, for sure. That's for sure. <laughs>